guys, welcome back to my shop. Um, I basically am doing a simple project today. It's something my wife has been wanting and I've been putting on the back burner for four years now. We're somewhere in just a, a while. So I'm going to bang it out today. It's a simple project. I really should have done this a while ago. But I'm basically making one of those boards where the hooks go onto and we can hang our coats. We have a coat closet, but it's kind of hard to get to, and when we come in, we tend to just throw our coats like on a kitchen chair or something. And it'd be nice to have somewhere where we can hang them real quick, take them when we need to go, and uh, just go right out the door. So this is gonna hang by my door. Um, it's pretty simple. We come right in, and I'll show you what we're doing. Okay, so what I have here is a piece of curly maple. Um, it's not really the best piece. There's a lot of tear out in it. There's this giant knot here. In fact, when I was at Hearn Hardwood, so this is my local hardwood place that I go to, um, on the way out, this was laying in the grass, and he's like, hey, do you want this? And he handed it off to me. It would probably pretty much be scrap for them. It's not really that long. Uh, on top of a stack, you can see where the banding marks have bent down. There's some burn marks here. Um, not the best piece of wood that you know they could possibly sell to the point where somebody just left it in the grass. Um, but I like it. I like the curl. I like the knot. I think it gives some interest. Um, kind of looking at which side, but I actually think this side would be easier to work with. Um, and so I was at my local farmer's market, and they were selling these sort of like cast hooks. coats on and then I have this piece of cherry that I, that I got from basically a scrap pile um, and I'll basically be gluing that but putting a slight curve in the top of it and that really will be it um, uh, there's a lot of prep work that's going to be for this piece here um, I have a lot of tear out that I have to work with and I'm going to try using uh, various things card scrapers uh, maybe a cabinet scraper um, I don't have the best skills with that stuff. I'm, I'm hoping to get better, and maybe this is a project to do it. But that's basically it. Let's get started. This wood had a lot of bad tear out. I used many different ways to clean it up. I used a cabinet scraper. I even tried a card scraper in some areas. That seemed to work pretty well. used a plane down here where the burn marks were. I just went ahead and jointed the cherry right on my joiner. I then went to a belt sander to clean up the remaining tear out in certain areas. Uh, plus this kind of brought everything down sort of level. I started out with uh, 80 grit and then went to 120 with the belt sander. I even went back to the orbital sander because I happen to have some 40 grit pads for this. So there were just a couple areas where there still was some tear out. The tear out went pretty deep. So the ends of these boards were pretty bad. There was a lot of uh, chipping. There was marks from when there was a metal band that went around the stack of wood. And I didn't really need the whole area. So what I did is I used a technique I've seen a lot of hand tool woodworkers do. I went around and cut a, a basically a knife line around the board and then chiseled out a little wedge, giving it a nice place to rest my handsaw. I did this on all four sides around where the cut will be. Here I am doing it on the side part of the board. Basically take my knife, do a couple passes, and then I take my chisel and chisel out a tiny little wedge, giving a nice spot for my handsaw to sit in. Here I am laying out the line as I continue around the board. You can see the tear out here on the back. It's pretty bad. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this with a back saw. You can do this very simply on the table saw. I'm using this as a practice to get a little better with my hand tool skills. If you're not a hand tool guy, just go ahead and do this on the table saw. So I'm laying out the curve in the cherry piece. So I find midway into the board and I mark it here. 
I put two F-style clamps, so the edge of the clamps are right where I want the curve to stop on each end. And I grab something. I grab a, a metal piece of steel, scrap steel here, to kind of create an arc. You can use a thin piece of wood, or there's some aftermarket things you can do. But I find the middle, I push it up, establish the curve, and I just mark it with a pencil. So I use a draw knife to remove the bulk of the waste. If you want to do this with power tools, you can do this right on the bandsaw or even use a jigsaw. I want to get the bulk of the waste away, so I'm using a draw knife to remove it really quickly. I don't want to go all the way to my line, but I want to get down somewhat close. Now that I'm close to the line, I'm going to go in with a spoke shave and refine this curve. I'm going to work both sides of the board, working my way down to the line I drew. I now put the piece in my bench dogs and I'm just further refining both sides. I use a piece of sandpaper on a flexible piece of wood to kind of level out the high spots. Now I'm going to go ahead and lay out the middle of the board. I go down with my marking gauge and I darken it with a pencil for both you and for me. I mark how far I want to go down on the sides with my compass. I want to put a nice curve into this board, a nice round over. So I'm using my spoke shave, so I'm slowly working down to those lines I created. Gently rounding over the piece as I go. I take as long a strokes as possible to kind of even everything out, but come back in and remove some of the high spots. I go ahead and put it in my vise because I couldn't get the spoke shave over enough without hitting the bench to really round over that curve. I grab some sandpaper to kind of smooth everything out. And that's what she looks like next to the maple. I found these coat racks at a local uh, farmer's market. I like the nice wrought iron nature of them. So I'm going to mark their positions and then I go ahead and flip over the board I want to go ahead and mark out where I'm going to put the keyhole slots to hang this on the wall. These are spaced a distance apart to allow direct drilling into the studs and not having to use any wall anchors. I basically go ahead and drill a pilot hole using a Forstner bit for the keyhole bit in my router. And then I set up this guide stick to guide a straight line with my router as I cut that keyhole slot. And I go ahead and just clamp that down. So as you see here, I'm actually routing in the wrong direction here. And I quickly realized that. Uh, for this to work, gravity's got to work with it. And I went the wrong direction. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to fix my mistake. It's so on the back side. No one will ever see it. Well, except for you guys. I go ahead and lay out and cut the other keyhole slot. So I'm cutting some pocket holes on the back of this board. And because of the natural edge of this board, I'm using the pocket holes here to act as clamps when I go ahead and glue on the top section. I go ahead and drill pilot holes for all the coat rack hardware. What I'm doing here is I didn't have any wrought iron color or black screws. So I'm taking the normal screws I have. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint them flat black to kind of blend in with the black in the hardware. It's pretty simple glue up. I'm basically just running a bead of glue along the edge and I'm going to use those pocket holes to glue and kind of clamp the piece together. I can't really get clamps very easily on it because of the natural edge to the one side of the board. And I just go ahead and use the screws to clamp it down. There's a little bit of a lip right here. So I'm just going to use my hand plane to flatten it down so that this will sit nice and tight up against the wall. So 
So what I'm applying here is an amber shellac. This is great. It will help pop the figure in the wood and add a little bit of warmth to the piece. I'm only applying one coat. I just went ahead and sprayed the piece down with some spray lacquer. I went ahead and attached the hardware, being real careful here not to go ahead and take any of that black paint from the screws off. These holes were not equally drilled on the hardware. There's definitely a rough handmade texture to these pieces, so I had to make sure I put the right hardware in the right spot so the holes would line up correctly. What I'm doing here is I'm putting in the keyhole slot a little tiny screw. And that's to, when I get it into position, I can push it up against the wall. Those tiny screws will mark on the wall where the larger screws will have to go. Here's some TV magic. This actually took me about 10 minutes to line it up and hang it up. But man, that went quickly right here. So I'm basically leveling it here. And there's the finished coat rack. Thanks for coming into my shop, or my hallway. I guess it's, thanks for coming to my hallway.